There is, I think, a, a very, very recurrent, widely held uh, idea that unemployment is a, is a really important causal factor in the successful recruitment of members of insurgent groups, of violent gangs, and perhaps extremist cells. It's, it has almost the force of common sense, this idea. It's what you might call, what we might call a, a rhetorical commonplace. And if you combine that with certain ideas about youth and the propensity of youth, and particularly young men, to engage in violence, you sometimes end up in a slightly hyperbolic statement, the realm of the, the, the demographics of danger, or the idea of a sort of inherent risk in this ghastly phrase, a youth bulge, and so on and so forth. That's the common sense version of the statement, but there's a formal kind of economic reasoning underpinning that idea. So it may be deeper than common sense. This is the argument that unemployed people have a low opportunity cost of engaging in violence. They effectively have little or nothing to lose by joining a violent group participating in violence. Even more strongly, they perhaps have a comparative advantage in violence. And from that perspective, where there's high unemployment, there will necessarily be very, very low recruitment costs. It's very, very easy to recruit people for a rebellion or an extremist cell or so on and so forth because they have that low opportunity cost of violence. The same argument reappears in some of the literature on transitions from war to peace. So, for example, we know it's quite common for societies that come out of a violent conflict, sadly, to return to warfare, to armed conflict, within a few years. Sometimes you'll see a very falsely precise statement of the percentage of countries that return to war. Don't believe those. But, but it's a serious issue nonetheless, it matters. We just don't know very much yet about why. However, one of the arguments for why comes back to unemployment. And this is the argument that the single most important influencing factor on civil war recidivism is the rate of growth of the economy. And it is then said, added to that, this, as one person puts it, probably operates through the employment mechanism. That means we don't know. But probably. Okay, it's a hunch. Um, we do know that in societies like Sierra Leone and Burundi, there's been episodes of post-war elections where it's, uh, some parties have recruited quite easily ex-fighters, former combatants, to harass and intimidate opponent, opponents and so on and so forth. So there's, a, there's something going on. And there's a powerful set of ideas. But it's not really clear yet how much we really know about this, what evidence there is underpinning this. Now, in one sense, I think this attention is a really, really good thing, given the fact that, for decades, development economics and policy has, if you like, neglected employment issues and labor markets and labor, rela labor relations. It's what the late Alice Amsden called jobs dementia in development economics. Gary Fields argues that understanding of labor markets and employment issues now is sort of where we were with poverty about 25, 30 years ago. So it's, it's a really good thing if there's more and more of a focus on employment in this case in, and its linkages to violence. The difficulty is that the data and the analysis haven't caught up with the hunch, if you like. So what may look like common sense, I am arguing, is exceedingly simplistic and often plain wrong. So just to give, uh, right, just to give you a little hint of that, it's, it's the labor market data, specifically, let's say, for sub-Saharan Africa, are often very, very unreliable. And then if you go further and you say, we want to know something about youth unemployment, youth unemployment statistics for Africa, bordering on the useless for any comparative or serious analytical work. So even if there is something going on, we're not in a position really to, to get a grip on it at that level, which is very, very frustrating. So I think what we can say is that certainly at the moment, we cannot read off from any given level of employment 
a certain statistical risk of violent conflict. The data just isn't there. There is some kind of evidence, and the interesting thing is it comes from very, very different approaches, perspectives, and methods. And it begins to generate a little bit richer insight. And just to give you a couple of brief examples, so if you look at some of the work that Francisco Gutierrez Sanin has done in Colombia, for example, looking through, pouring over judicial records, looking at the data on captured FARC CD-ROMs and drawing on other evidence. What seems to be the case is that, yes, there are some people who join the FARC or paramilitary groups who are unemployed, but many of the people who volunteer, willingly join up, were previously not only employed, but employed at above average wages. So there's something more complicated going on. If you look at Eli Berman and his co-authors, they use different kind of evidence. They look at panel data for Iraq and the Philippines. And they're investigating exactly that thing I talked about, the opportunity cost. And, and, and they, they're looking at the relationship between unemployment and political violence. And as they put it, if there is an opportunity cost effect, it is not dominant in either case. It doesn't seem to be what's, what's going on. You can look at a, a parallel kind of literature, not on violent conflicts, political violence, but on violent gangs in the USA. And there are different authors that, that, that use different research methods to get at this. One of, one of the ones that really most intrigues me is uh, Philippe Bourgeois' extraordinary ethnographic work in East Harlem, uh, where he lived amongst um, violent drag, drug gangs for, for, for three years or so. And, um, I think what's important in his work is it helps you understand how it's not really employment or unemployment, but structural changes in the labor force combined with issues of identity, racial identity. And in a context where many poor people in East Harlem experience daily forms of institutionalized violence from the police and so on and so forth, those are the things that matter rather than specifically employment status. And in a way, that, that echoes what Francisco Gutierrez uh, writes about in, in, in Colombia. There's a bit of a literature on post-war interventions and employment schemes, the extent to which DDR programs may or may not be effective in generating employment and in reducing uh, political violence, the effectiveness of donor-backed employment schemes that are supposed to underpin peace building, the literature, the research, evidence thus far on those things, I think it's fair to say is, is underwhelming, inconclusive, and very, very mixed. There's no powerful story emerging. Again, it's, it's very frustrating. So we're, in a way, I think, still very much in the early days of trying to get to grips with, with these issues. Where I think I'd end up uh, is saying that, that, that we might be able to conclude with a, a couple of things. Firstly, where unemployment does matter, and I'm quite convinced in some contents it does, it's only very much in combination with other factors, usually political factors, and also very localised agendas. Uh, in other words, there's no law, there's no automatic law translating levels of, of unemployment to specific risks of violence. That goes for, for all sorts of forms of violence. But I think the second thing, and I think what's really, really important, and what tends to get neglected in this literature, is that what we need to do is look far more, not just at whether people have jobs or not, but at what kinds of job they have. That's the bit that's been neglected thus far. And I think that's very, very important in the context especially where the ILO, for example, claims that work claims more victims around the world than does war, and that where workplace violence is becoming an alarming phenomenon around the world. And you put that, the conditions of labor, in the world in which we live, within the specific political context in many places, I think that can be equally explosive as unemployment itself. So in short, Employment and unemployment are both important. The causal relationships are varied and complex, and we don't know enough about them yet. Let me go.